Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how I've made this very sweet little frame card. I'm going to call it a triple frame card or triple frame shadow box card, something like that. I've got lots of these shadow box frames on my channel, all different sizes. So I'll link the playlist up here because you can, you know, take this kind of idea, but maybe change it to the sizes in the other videos. So check that one out in case five by seven isn't the size that you like to make. But this one will fold up like this. I'm going to add some pattern paper on the front here and that will go into my five by seven box envelopes because the dimension here is just over one inch, which will fit into those boxes. You've got your space on the back to write your message. Again, I'll put some mats and layers on that later on. But I made this one during a Facebook Live and I had an idea to create something like this. It's a deconstructed frame. I've I think this style makes it really easy for you to change the sizes and stuff. So hopefully, once you see how I put this together, if you want to make these side pieces taller, you can. You could even have three of the same size frame as well, but you'd have to play around them with the hinges if you wanted to um, fold it up. You could also have these folded around the back if you'd prefer. And then those bits will just fold down when you pop it into the envelope like so. So it's up to you which way you want to fold it. I might well do that, actually. You can fold them that way as well. And then when you put it out of the box, you just see that straight away. And then these kind of pop out. So a few ways to change this up. You could pop a little gift in here as well. I was saying in the live, you could maybe have like a small pair of earrings, a necklace, something like that. Could, you know, go inside these. You could pop some acetate over the top. But this one's for Nan. And today's card is going to be for Mother's Day. So let's get started. OK, so first of all, we will make the main frame. So you're going to need to cut yourself. I've already done the two long pieces. So I've got one in white just to show you that part. But you want to cut yourself a piece of five by seven card that's for the back or the you know the inside of the frame and then i'm going to add a mount effect around my photo so this is the picture i've got and i just cut a rectangle in the middle of this other piece of five by seven that would allow for the picture to come through so whatever you know it's going to vary i mean the photo i've got here is a standard four by six so I just got them printed in my local shop um, and it will fit inside here perfectly now I'm going to show you how to seal it up so that you can just keep the top open and you can change the photo but because this is for Mother's Day and I'm having a little Mother's Day sentiment I'm going to seal mine in there because I know mum won't change this my aperture size here is about three and a half by five and a quarter something around that size and just run that through or cut it by hand it could be an oval shape as well it doesn't have to be a rectangle you might have a couple of photos in here as well you could have you know two little apertures there so prepare all of those pieces and then you want to cut yourself two pieces of two and a half by seven and they're going to be for these sides here like i said i've already stuck these down i forgot i needed to keep one for the tutorial along the two and a half side you're going to score at half one, one and a half and two, Ooh, two. Fold and burnish all of the score lines. And then just to remove some of the bulk when you go to fold it up, the right hand side here, I'm just cutting a little slither off of the edge there, just a little bit. And then take your glue or double-sided tape and just run that all along the tab there. And if you fold it over, so you've got one of the half inch and then the one with the glue, and then you'll have this one, just fold that over the top. And because you've removed the bulk, it will lie completely flat. And then when you open it up, you want to have that perfect square. And you've got that tube there. So do that twice. So you've got these. Then you need to create the top and the bottom here. So you'll want these pieces. And these are five by two and a half. So the widths are two and a half on all of the pieces that I that I show you. But the five and the seven, you can make them as big or as small as you want, as long as they're both the same. So two pieces of five by two and a half. And along the two and a half side, you're going to score again at half, one, one and a half and two. And then along the five inch side, you're going to score at half an inch down to the first score line. And four and a half down to the first score line. Flip and do the same. These are just cut lines, so it doesn't matter about the direction. So half and four and a half, just down to the first score line. If I just hold it up there, you can see. You should have these little half inch squares now in each corner. Again, fold and burnish the score lines, and then take your scissors, and you're gonna cut down. I like to remove the score line, so cut down where you've just scored, 
and then you're going to cut across and down to the top of the next score line. I'll show you again here. So remove the score line and then cut down and across. If I turn it that way, you've got like a little chimney top and then like the roof. Then at this end, you're going to just remove the square completely. But again, remove all of the score line. And then this end where you don't have the sloped side, again, just take a little bit off the edge there. And then again, take your glue and run that all the way down. And you're going to do the same again. So fold over the two there and then that one. Again, you're doing this twice. You can see I've got a nice square tube there, but this time it's shaped. And you can see now we've got the corners of our frame. So this one will then pop inside and you'll see you start to get that shape. So that's all the pieces for the main frame here. So if you just want to have that, I've got tutorials. I think it's a slightly different width or height frame, but the size of five by seven is the same. And like I said, they're all be in that playlist. Then if you want to make the little frames either side, I've already got this one ready here. So this is what we're going to now create. So you can see it's got the little hinge to attach, which will all fold It'll be that way. We'll all fold up like so. You'll want two pieces of two and a half by three. And, that, oh, and that's for the back of this one here. Then you'll want another two pieces of two and a half by three. And these are going to be for our long sides here. So along the two and a half side, you're going to score at half, one, one and a half and two. So you've already got one here ready. Again, fold and burnish all the score lines. And then again, I'm just going to take a little bit off of the edge there, add my glue. And again, fold two over and then that other one. Okay, so you should have two like this. So they're going to go either side here. And now we need to create the same little angled ones you can see I've got that one there so two pieces of two and a half squared along one of the sides you're going to score at half one one and a half and two and then along the other side you're going to do that same half an inch but this time two inch just down to the first score line so again you're creating that little half inch square in each corner so again just flip it so you're working on the opposite side there half and two just down to the first score line Fold and burnish the score lines and then you're going to cut up again and then down and across. And then again in the opposite corner, you're removing the square completely. And then again, just a little bit off of the edge there. Fold over those two and then that one. And then for the hinge, you'll want two pieces of two by three. And along the two inch side, you're going to score at half, one and one and a half. And then you're going to concertina fold. So mountain, valley and a mountain fold. You want to have an M shape or a W shape. OK, and I've already done one for the other side there because it's already attached. So next we'll put the frame together. So take one of these shorter ends here. I'm just going to add some glue just on the kind of square part there and then just underneath the sloped part. Take one of these and I always like to make sure the join is inside the card and then just sit that inside. And then if you use your grid or a ruler, if you've got something, you know, like this, you could sit that in the corner. You just want to make sure that you get a nice right angle. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit there and just hold that there for a second. And then I'm going to go to the next corner and again, just add some glue, like so. And take this one again, make sure that joins inside. Sit that one in there. If you've got any kind of bulk or it's sticking out, it's probably because you didn't remove the score lines when you cut it at the beginning. So it does make a difference removing that bulk. So again, I'm just making sure everything's nice and straight. We don't want a crooked frame. Okay, that all looks good. And then with this one, you want to add the glue to both corners because you're going to attach this all at the same time. 
and just slot them into place. Again, just make sure they're all secure. If for any reason you're not happy with your corners, you can cover them up with some decoration. I'm actually going to be using a lot of flowers on this one so that you can easily cover things up. Okay, next I'm going to add this piece here and I'm going to stick it inside here. And I want to make sure I've got a nice equal frame. So I think I'm going to just add, I'm going to use the construction glue just because it'll be nice and strong, but also just gives me a bit more wiggle time so I can make sure I've got it exactly in place. So I'm, I'm just popping it right on the very outer side there. You could use a thin tape as well if you want. And then I'm just going to sit that. I cut this just slightly under five by seven, just a smidge under. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Next, I want to attach this all to here, but if you want to be able to change the photo, you only want to add your glue along the two sides and the bottom. And again, just do a thin amount because you want the photo to be able to have the space to slide in. I'm not going to do that. Like I said, this is specifically for Mother's Day. So I'm going to just add some thin tape around the edge here. Also, when you're sticking the photo in, if you are doing it like me, make sure you don't use a solvent based glue. So I won't use this with the photo. I'll use my um, actual glue there or a double sided tape because over time any kind of um, solvent based acid kind of glues will just eat away at your picture. So if you want to have this as something, you know, that people can keep, then definitely use a photo friendly glue. And now I can just sit this one like so. So before you cover it in glue like I just did, you want to attach your frame. So I'm actually going to stick this on this side because I've got the glue. So you just want to add the glue to the back of the frame or onto that end strip and just stick it like so. And just make sure that it's nice and flush with the surface there as well because you want this to obviously be able to stand up. You don't want these you know, floating around, but that's all going to work really well. So to put these together, it's exactly the same way as you did the large one. So I'm just going to add my glue onto the edge there, take my side piece there, and again, just use my mat there to make sure it's all nice and straight. So here's a good example of where I've got a part that I'm not happy with. I've obviously cut in a bit too far. Can you see I've got a gap there? But I'm just going to make sure that that one will be, let's have it, I'm going to do it, do I want it at the top? No, I'm going to have it at the bottom there in that corner and then I know I can cover it up. You then want to take your hinge piece, run your glue down whatever side you need it to be attached one will be attached from the left and one you'll attach on the right. And then you're going to take your hinge and just stick it behind like so. And then take your glue again. If you're adding little photos into these, then you'll add your photo next. If you're going to do it similar to how I did the large one. And then you're going to take your main back piece there and just stick that. So you can see the hinge is all now concealed. So it looks nice and neat from the back as well as the front. Like so. And then this glue is still wet enough for me to attach the other one there. So I'm just going to make sure that's flush with the bottom. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to add my glue over the two sides, all the way around again. And then on the back there as well. And then just cover that all up everything is concealed and it looks nice and neat so now if you cut a piece of four and three quarter by six and three quarter white card stick it on the back have a little stamp sentiment if you want and there's you know your space to write your message so now if you want to decorate your frame like i have with this small one here so all of these are three eighths of an inch wide 
you'll want two that are four and three quarters for the top and bottom and then for the sides they'll be six and three quarters okay and then take that one just make sure i've got them in the right place and then if you want to cover the small frame here and you're going to want four pieces of by by two and three quarter and then four pieces by two and a quarter okay to create the angle just start off with one first so take this one here sit it on i'm just going to flip it over so i've got the white side and sit it on so you've got the same border at the top and the bottom and then i'm just going to mark like so and i'll give you that measurement so i've just marked down from the edge there i think it was three eighths okay i'm then going to cut from the point down to that pencil mark so i've now got the perfect angle this one i'm actually going to do for this side now because obviously it's flipped and then all you need to do is just wrap it around don't put a fold in it to the other end just make sure they line up and cut across like so and that way you've now got the perfect angle for the bottom as well and then i'm going to take that next strip and i'm going to pop these back to back line them up like so and then i'm just going to cut across like there so that oh, that very first one where I, you know, marked, marked it with a pencil, I'm now using that to do all the rest. I'm not having to measure every single one. So now they're perfect. And then with this one, again, I'm just going to line it up with the top there. Again, snip across. And then I can pop that one back. And now I can just do the same with this one. So just loop it. Like so. And now I've got the perfect one for the top. And then I can just put them pattern to pattern. That way you know your angles are the right way for the opposite ones. And then you'll just do exactly the same with this one. Just use, you know, this to start off the top and then loop it. And I'll do that all in a moment. that's my frame all finished i love it i think it looks so pretty i forgot to say as well at the beginning this isn't going to be actually put into an envelope this is going to go into a mother's day hamper that i'm putting together so it will just sit in the hamper open like so because you have to kind of take into account anything you have overhanging then you're going to need to make a bigger box but i've got tutorials on lots of different size gift bags i've got kind of slimline envelope style gift bags as well so you could probably find you might even be able to sit it in the slimline gift bag that i've got when you squeeze the sides in but i've added the little butterfly there so it's just covered that little there was that little gap just underneath there so like i said really easy to cover up any little bits you're not happy with and then i stuck the you're the best just slightly over the top there love you suspended across the sides there 
and then the flowers in some of the corners. I've also embossed and changed the backgrounds there because I wanted these in white. Again, the Love You was on white and it just kind of got a bit lost against the white background. So I've embossed it with my Ditsy um, embossing folder there. Got my space on the back there to write my message. And you can see how it all folds up like so and then just fold in the sides. Yeah, I think I prefer them folded at the back and that's the way that, you know, you take it out of the box envelope. But that would still go in. I just have to make a slightly bigger one. So I'll just bring back in the one I've made for Nan. So two very different styles there, but one I wanted to show using an actual photo and then this one here. And as I said in the Facebook Live, you could have a big number in the middle here. This could be for a special birthday. You could put some little photos maybe in the smaller frames and just have a nice image or something coloured like I've done with this one here. So thank you for watching. I will link everything that I've used in the description box below, including the product from this one here, because it was using some beautiful Daisy May spring stamps. And I know lots of you do like those ones. Like I said, I'll have that playlist that would have popped up with the other shadow box frames, and I'll have a few of them here. So you might want to go and watch one of those next. And as I always say, if you're not subscribed, but you've enjoyed today, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. And that way you won't miss out when I share any future videos. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.